Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. It is Wednesday, April 13th, around 11 Central Time, 12 Eastern Time. That would be 9 Pacific Time. I've always got to think about all the different time zones that we're dealing with here. I hope everyone's doing well and healthy and happy these days. Thank you for joining us again. I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes um, to let some of the extra attendees roll in for today's session, and we'll get the show on the road. Um, in the meantime, for those of you who are here, could I ask you to please raise your hand if you can see my screen. You should see just the opening slide deck. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Patrick. And of course, that means you can all hear me as well. So I'll go ahead and put your hands down. <sighs> okay, so that took up all of half a minute. <laughs> so I think we'll just go ahead and get the show on the road. Uh, we've got most of our attendees here and um, we'll be able to We'll be, thank you, Matt, looking good on this end. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, we'll get the show on the road. Uh, my name is Katie Griffin. I'm the Director of Business Development here at Spire, and it's my pleasure to bring you the fourth uh, edition in our Knowledge Base series with our guest speaker today, Michael Craig, who's the Operations Consultant at Gemini Logic. Hi, Michael. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good, good, good. Hanging in there halfway through the week, right guys? <laughs> a couple of housekeeping items. We've already done the sound check, so thank you very much. Uh, this is a go-to webinar, so unlike a Zoom, you can see us, but we can't see you. There probably will come a time where we can see you in one of our Spire events, but this is not it, sadly. Um, I do encourage you to check out our events page where you'll be able to find different Spire events that are going on. Um, go ahead and check out spiresystems.com slash events. It's right there in the menu. Uh, we try to roll out the next knowledge-based webinar by the time we're presenting the previous one. So you'll definitely find some information on that web page for you. Um, for those of you who are attending, you can receive a certificate um, confirming your attendance for CP hours if that's what you need and this is not a training event this is a knowledge-based discussion where you will walk away with some helpful tips to apply through your day-to-day -day practice um, but we do encourage you to speak to your Spire consultant if you have questions about the webinar, um, we aren't taking any questions during this hour today, but most of our Spire consultants are online and they'll be able to answer any questions that you have about the topic. Okay. Great, thank you. So moving right along, um, we're gonna be covering CRM and ERP, right? So what is the difference? Um, Michael from Gemini Logic, they have created a connect to HubSpot. So that will be the CRM that we'll be focusing on today in this discussion. We're gonna talk about what is really the difference between a CRM and an ERP. We're gonna talk about the benefits of having a CRM. Um, Michael and I were just talking about how some mature businesses out there who've been successful and have always done it a certain way, sometimes don't see the need of a CRM. So we'll talk about the benefits of that. I am gonna give you some Spire tips uh, on terms of customer service kind of things, KPIs, communications, what you can do in Spire. Spire is not a CRM, but some of the things that you can do in Spire. And then we're gonna talk with Michael about automation um, versus integration or, or via integration rather, sorry, that should say via integration, dashboard reporting, and a lot of the other CRM components that are important for a business today. So what's the difference? Um, you know, a CRM is not just for a salesperson. And I think that there's a lot of assumptions about that, Michael. You know, a CRM does more than just follow up with leads or give you an ability to follow up with leads. It's really designed to capture the details, all the details that go on with an, an interaction with a customer. So whether it's an email or a phone call or whatever the case may be, and the objective of implementing a CRM in an organization is to help manage your customer relationships. And that really builds trust in the customers for the company to help maintain a long-term relationship with them. Um, CRMs will consolidate information, phone numbers, addresses, emails. They'll typically have a tight audit trail of the communications that you're having with a customer. Um, and it's been around for quite some time, as you can see here on the slide deck, developed about in the 90s. Um, 
designed to increase sales originally, sure, but really, again, maintaining that uh, information about your communications and your ongoings with your clients. An ERP, as you guys all very well know, because most of you are using Spire or your Aspire consultant, is more about your financial transactions and your management operationally of what your company has going on on a day-to-day -day basis. And so most businesses, nearly all growing businesses, will need a CRM along with their ERP. And most ERPs might have some resemblance of CRM functionalities, but they're not designed to be a CRM. And so taking a look at whether your business actually needs that, even if you're a mature business, but especially if you're a growing business, the same way that we see businesses outgrowing entry-level accounting packages, such as QuickBooks, Michael, or Stage 50, right? We'll see mm -hmm. that they've um, now have extra needs and they're outgrowing um, perhaps just the little bits of communication tools that exist in an ERP and really need something to help manage their business. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just launch a poll for everyone in the audience. I'd like to know, Michael and I would like to know, if you are currently using a CRM, so you should see that on your screen right now. The answers available to you are yes, no, or we will be soon. Um, and based on what we've just shared with you, the differences between the two programs, that should help you identify whether you are truly using a CRM or not. I'm gonna give that just a couple more seconds. Most of you have already voted. It's fantastic. Ooh, Michael, these numbers are interesting. I don't think you can see that on your end yet here. So I'm going to go ahead and close the poll and I'm going to share those results. And everybody should be able to see that a large portion, a majority of our audience is not using a CRM today, Michael. Um, wow. Yeah, pretty interesting. Good. Well, thanks for sharing that, everybody. I'm going to move on to the next slide here. Uh, sorry, I've got some little animations going on. So some of the benefits of a CRM, it's, one of them is collaboration, okay? And I can speak from experience in, in having a sales role most of my career. Collaboration is very important, um, not just for the sales people or manager, customer service and accounting. So collaborating on a customer account and needing to have several team members either working on a particular aspect of the customer account or um, being able to share information about that. Automation is another benefit, a huge benefit, absolutely. So the elimination of duplicate work, human errors, this is big in any business. We talk about this a lot in Spire, but it's absolutely true in the CRM world as well. Um, when we talk about CRM, more like consistent branding, consistent communications are important as well, right? Ultimately, working on improving the customer's experience. We all want to do that. I don't care what you sell in your business or what kind of business you have. We are all constantly striving to improve our customer experience. And so CRMs are really good at helping you with that. And not just acquisition of clients, but retention of clients is equally as important as getting the new ones, right? And so building those long lasting relationships with your clients and ultimately all of this goes towards increasing revenue. We all want to increase our revenue. I mean, that's a, a big part. We're, we're not in the nonprofit or rather not profitable business, right? And so let's work on increasing our revenue and CRMs can actually really help you with that. Um, Michael, you've been working with CRMs for a long time and what are some mm -hmm. of the benefits that, that you could speak to? Yeah, so on on the sales, sales side of, of the benefits of a CRM is just, I mean, to start off first is going to be maintaining that central database and that central database allows everybody to basically have the same information whether that's the customer service team the sales team all the way up to the marketing team so they're able to see what's working what's not working if somebody has a question they can forward that on to somebody that can answer it internally um, and then the next one is going to be the benefits of automating just not only data entry but other aspects of the sale process. So if you are enrolling a list of maybe 100 to 200 people in a sales sequence, you can automate a lot of those follow-up emails to reminders to make that phone call, making sure nobody really gets dropped off of a prospect list. 
The next is going to be kind of your deal tracking as well, where you can follow someone's life cycle, a prospect's life cycle, all the way through to when they convert into a client. So you're able to see how long does it take from to convert from a lead to a marketing qualified, to sales qualified, to an opportunity, and then to a closed customer. Where are the bottlenecks? And then where are areas that need improvement? what is being pushed, what's being pulled, so you can have your push-pull information in there as well. Then a really important one for everybody involved in the company is gonna be just sales forecasting. This will help you determine manufacturing, how many resources you need to apply um, down the road. If you have a six-month sales cycle, for example, and you brought on a big deal, you have an idea of, okay, I need to ramp up manufacturing for this deal to close in six months. So it gives you a little bit of a forward-looking view as well. Um, and then you, you have that, all of that kind of conversational information in there. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I, I think so. And not just the prospecting, but it's also for customers, right? I mean, the mm -hmm. acronym is CRM, Customer Relationship Management. And I really invite our listeners today to think about from a customer service perspective, what are the benefits, right? And so, you know, maintaining that detailed history of the account um, before they came a customer, they became a customer like Michael was talking about, that still all exists. It doesn't just disappear. And I think it's important to have that information. As I mentioned earlier, an audit trail of all communications, right? Where was that document? Where did you send that email? Where, you know, when was that phone call made? Uh, who in the organization had these communications with you? Very important. Um, and then better internal communications. Absolutely. I've experienced where I've been able to, um, through a CRM, hand something over to a colleague and say, hey, could you check on this for me? Um, or have you, you've been able to talk to this person or whatever the case may be? Um, I would say that, you know, from reporting to opportunities of bettering, whether it's your sales cycle or your customer service response time or any of these other things that should be your KPIs, your key performance indicators, guys, which we'll talk about a little bit later, um, are really the benefits from a customer service perspective as well, right? I am going to actually just um, jump into Spire for a little bit and show um, just a couple of things that I wouldn't say are CRM uh, functionality. Spire is not a CRM. Let's be very clear about that. But just a little bit of um, tools that you guys can use, a little bit of tips that you guys can use to help out um, improve customer service or any kind of prospecting that you might be doing in Spire. So here's my customer list. That's my database uh, over here, my sample database. And um, I received a phone call. Let's say I'm a customer service agent. I received a phone call from Art Davidson and Associates. So as opposed to going into receivables, or orders, uh, I don't know why he's calling yet. He just called and said, this is John from Art Davidson. I've got something to say. He's not very happy. Okay, so I'm going to go in and he says that he received an invoice for a kettlebell that he had um, and the kettlebell is broken and he's obviously very upset about that. I, I don't know. I made this up. I don't know how one breaks a kettlebell. They're very heavy <laughs> and solid, but let's just say the kettlebell is broken. Okay. Now you talked about having an invoice with the kettlebell on it. And um, he gives me the invoice number 60024. And I can see that straight through his customer accounts. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And he's talking about kettle inspire kettlebell uh 35 right and he's telling me how upset he is with it and he shouldn't have to pay for it and all of these good things that customers sometimes are upset about right and so i'm going to go ahead and in his uh sales history here for that particular order under the communications tab keep in mind it's important how to keep things organized here guys right so it's pertaining to that particular order and that's why I'm putting this note in here and I'm going to put that I'm going to call it um unhappy uh RMA needed broken item and maybe I'm just going to put um art Davidson right away. So it's in the subject line, I can see it. And I'm going to put my notes that I spoke with John. He's unhappy, wants to return the kettlebell, and uh, we will issue an RMA and we will reship 
uh, at no cost, let's say, okay? And I actually um, need to assign this to Tom Sawyer, who is the sales rep, let's say, um, that handled this to begin with, or perhaps he's uh, someone that manages RMAs. So he's in my user list. I'm going to assign it to Tom Sawyer. And I'm going to put it for tomorrow because Tom is not in the office today. And I've let John know that we will take care of that and, and that that will be all fine and dandy. I'm going to put the alert so that it shows up. So now that information is within the order. I'm just going to go ahead and back out of there. Um, now, typically, your process would be to issue the RMA um, and then reissue the sales order. But what I'd like to show you in terms of communications inspire, and, and this will come back around full circle in just a second, is if I'm looking for anyone who's unhappy, uh, unhappy, there we go, that pops up right? I talked a little bit about KPIs before, and, and there's different types of KPIs, right? There's customer service KPIs, there's sales KPIs. I mean, they're really defined by what you want to measure the performance of, of a particular department or aspect of your company. And so for customer service um, or customer satisfaction KPI, we may want to know how many of our customers are unhappy. This is a manual way of doing something like this, right? So let's say... Um, the next thing that we talk about is, you know, keeping communications um, transparent as much as possible with uh, the organization, with your own organization and within your clients as well. So let's say I'm Tom Sawyer and now I need to go ahead and issue a RMA, right? So I'm going to go into sales. Um, I want to place an order, or, right? So I'm going to pull up art. Mm, sorry, I want to create a new one. My apologies. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And the customer is Art. And I'm going to go ahead and do my RMA. Now, you should know how to do this. I'm not going to do it all for you. Um, but you guys can definitely see that um, an RMA would be issued. You can email that out. Um, there are templates that you can use. And when we talk about setting up templates and communications, I think a lot of Spire partner, Spire clients rather, are used to using that for sending out statements or invoices or whatever other kind of transactional documents you're doing. Um, but I encourage you to use it for other communications as well, right? So here's the email template that I created for any kind of like broken item that might happen, right? And it's just creating that template. We sincerely apologize. You pop in the fields that you need. Um, I love that Spire has, you know, fields for the salesperson's name, email, phone number, um, and all of that can be auto-populated for you. When you attach this template to mailing out, uh, emailing out the new order or the RMA to the customer, in this case, Art Davidson. Okay. Um, one of the things that I think is really cool is those email templates, like I said, but also um, sales performance KPIs, right? And one of the nice features about Spire is it always this filtering option that we have. And one KPI might be, I want to see um, how many sales we made last year that were over $25,000. This isn't a financial report for revenue or profit. I just want to know who my customers were that spent over 25 grand with us last year. And I want to send them an email, right? So I'm going to, I, uh, sorry, I have created this filter in advance and I want to do a mail merge um, of all of them. And I've already created the document, but just to give you an idea, right with Inspire, you can go ahead and you can edit or create a templated mail merge, um, again, populating the fields um, that you want and you know, offering a discount, right? You spent over 25,000 with us, maybe I wanna give you a discount. So again, these are not um, CRM uh, features or functionalities, but they have some elements of that. And depending on how you're running your business, that may or may not be um, applicable for you. So I have one more poll actually for you guys. And I'm wondering for those of you, um, how you are managing your um, CRM uh, functionalities, right? Any kind of thing like that. So how does your business handle customer uh, management, right? Is it Inspire? 
is it in a dedicated CRM? Most of you aren't using one, so okay. Are you doing an Excel? Um, you know, Excel is the most popular accounting software in the world, even though it's not an accounting software, but it's used for all kinds of tracking data type of information. Um, or are you not tracking customer service types of things at all, management uh, of your customer relationships at all? So about only half of you have voted. I'll give you another little minute to do that. And I will um, let you guys know that we are not taking questions right now. So please um, just remember that and save your questions for your partner. So I'm going to go ahead and close that poll and I'm going to share the results. And most of you, Michael, can you see that? Most of them are managing their customer relationship management Inspire, right? Mm -hmm. um, now that's great. Thank you very much for sharing, but you will have some limitations there, okay? Um, I'm gonna talk about now a little bit more um, automation um, via integration and what some of these challenges are that we have seen. Um, Michael and I have spent some time talking about this and uh, both having a bit of a sales background, you know, we do understand some of these common challenges. And Michael, Oops, pardon me, I apologize. The first one is the customer data frenzy, right? Like that whole like, where is the data? Where is the information being kept? The customer service team is a completely different data set. Um, the accounting department has a completely different data set. The sales department is just, they're all siloed, right? And mm -hmm. sales, customer service, and accounting, these are three really strong pillars of a business. Um, and spreadsheets all over the place, um, it just makes it difficult to have a focused uh, trajectory for how you manage your, your customers and your sales prospects. Um, manual updates, so you saw some of that information, that manual way of doing things, and that might work for you in some cases, but for example, what we mean as well is if you have a website, which almost all businesses do today, and there's a contact us form, on your website or a free demo form or whatever form you have on your website, a lot of businesses are still receiving those through uh, an email notification um, and then having to manually input that information into a system, right? So that is one of the challenges. And if you're the kind of business that gets a lot of inquiries on your website um, or even your social media, I've talked Aspire clients who um, rely on Facebook quite a bit for customers to communicate with them. Um, it can it can be daunting to just manually do all of that, right? And then having an undefined return on your investment, really not knowing uh, where the sale came from, right? Where that opportunity came from, where that customer came from. Um, you'll make investments in a particular promotion, or you'll make investments in a particular type of marketing, um, but you don't have any actual way to track where these opportunities are coming from. Did it come from that promotion or whatever the case may be? A lot of people may ask a new client, where did you hear about us from? And if you don't, I suggest you do. It's very important. Um, but maybe there's no place to actually put that detail and be able to measure how many came from a particular promotion. Wasted resources are another challenge. So time spent on retrieving data from multiple resources, right? So like you've got ERP that has data in there that's important to look at for an overall key performance indicator. You've got uh, perhaps another CRM uh, that isn't connected to your ERP, or um, you're trying to monitor your Google Analytics to see how well your website is performing, or perhaps you're using an email marketing tool like MailChimp or Constant Contact and you want to know how many people are actually opening and clicking the messages and the promotions that are going out. But these exist in four or five different applications. And so collaborating and getting that information to produce a report for the people who need it can be time just spent on, wasted time, really. And then Client retention, your customer service, and I can't say this enough. I've I've always said it really throughout my career that you know client retention is just as important as client acquisition and how quickly you respond to your existing clients, how you treat them, uh, how you you know deal with any of the concerns like a broken kettlebell, let's say, um, means that your customer appreciates the attention that you're giving them, and being able to 
do that in an efficient way doesn't just mean you pick up the phone every single time. Um, there are some automation things that exist that can really address all of these common challenges, Michael. Um, you want to talk to us a bit about what some of these solutions are? Yeah, happy to. Um, yeah, so customer data frenzy. So by with the integration between Spire and a CRM, or in this case, HubSpot, um, we were bringing in all of, all of that transactional information into, into one platform that allows you to make decisions. And then as, it also allows you to combine your marketing information, your, uh, your sales information, and then it empowers those salespeople to make decisions on whether or not they need to follow up with somebody, uh, whether or not someone's at risk uh, of lo losing you know, a deal, et cetera. You can see it all in one place. Um, and, and, and you use that accordingly. Manual updates. So, I mean, you can take, and I have a great example of this. So for it, for example, if you were to download the analytics for Spire demo off of, off of our web, website on Gemini, you'll automatically get an email response from, from us that'll say, congratulations, thank, thanks for downloading analytics for Spire. And then a day later, it's going to assign me a task to follow up with a phone call, make sure that you got it installed correctly, make sure there was no issues. 15 days after that, you'll get another email. And it's an automatic email. It's personalized. It'll have your name. It'll have all of your, your business name, who your partner is, everything like that already in there. But it's automatic. I don't actually have to send it out myself. It'll go out to you. And then I have another, another task to follow up with a phone call to make sure that there's no issues. 15 days after and then finally when you're going through the whole process you get reminders to say your trial is going to expire soon roi and where this comes into play is when you're doing sales campaigns or marketing campaigns you're able to kind of put the the revenue and associate that revenue with those expenses so you can see the return on on the, those campaigns especially now that we're bringing in all of that transactional information you know how you acquired that client the first time, uh, and you you can associate the revenue from that client to back to a digital campaign or a marketing campaign or a print ad or a coupon, et cetera. So you can see how that type of a campaign really benefited you and whether or not you want to repeat it or if you need to update it and make changes there and improvements. And then as well, wasted resources. So wasted resources is just you know, having all of that information in one place, it eliminates the need for you to now share information with your sales teams. They can go, they're self-service now, they can go get it themselves and manipulate that information in a way that is useful to them. It's gonna be how the sales team uses this information is gonna be different from how the marketing team uses that from, it's gonna be different from how the sales team uses it. So giving them the the power to to use it the way they want to is uh is really advantageous mm -hmm. i think having that autonomy in your role is um uh, a value add to how efficient you can be right so mm -hmm. if i'm a salesperson and i know my top client um i want to just i want to give them a call maybe I, I put in a task to check in on them every quarter let's say right um yep. but I used to have to say to the accounting department, like, do they have anything outstanding? Like, is there anything I should know about their account before I give them a call to check on them? Because the worst thing is, you know, to call one of your best customers or a prospect and not know that they had a whole conversation with the accounting department and maybe some payment terms were arranged, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so having that autonomy and, and, and information at your fingertips, I think is, is hugely valuable, right? Yeah. Um, and, and that speaks to your last point there too, Michael, I think as well, right? Yeah, exactly. And so just to build on that a little bit is a, a, a customer ordered something, but it's on back order and it's still on back order. And if you call somebody up and you don't have an update on that, or you don't have access to, to that type of information, then, I mean, it, it, it makes that conversation, it can make that conversation a little bit awkward, right? You're scrambling to, okay, well, where's this information living? Who can I reach out to right now? Do I have to send them an email, right? And so yeah. if you have that, you can pull up their account on the CRM, you can see what orders they've placed, when they were placed, and what stage those orders are in. Have they been shipped? Have they been, or when were they shipped? Follow up with a, an email saying your order's been shipped. Uh, you should have received your order. You know, do you have any questions about it? That type of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 
And then customer service as well. You can see you know, all of the orders that have that have been placed, where those orders are, um, and then yeah, again, any outstanding invoices. Um, yeah, and and this helps you evaluate whether or not a, a customer is potentially at risk, right? Right. Uh, so absolutely. You're able to see who your best clients are and and who are are at risk and need some some more attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let's let's reassure everyone that just because a salesperson or a customer service agent has access to see an account balance does not mean that they can touch the account or credit a balance or give away anything, right? It's a view exactly. only kind of thing. So you're really not needing to worry about anyone messing up any kind of information or data that's important in the system. Um, mm -hmm. And not not only does not having that information make for an awkward conversation, right? Like the customer has been waiting for an order that's on back order forever. And I'm calling just to say, hey, how you doing? Are you happy? Well, no, I'm not happy. I haven't gotten my order yet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> not only is it awkward, but it's so bad for the company. It makes the company look disorganized. It makes the company look like uh, they don't know what's going on in their own company, really, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it's a waste of time for the customer, right? So a lot of added value um, and a lot of solutions to these common challenges that, that we see. Um, so one big thing that we are going to get into um, is, is KPIs. And it's a very trendy term, uh, key performance indicators. What are your KPIs? You walk into a business meeting, everyone wants to know, what are your KPIs? Um, but in order to get that, there's a lot that goes into understanding what happens to um, a customer or a prospect in order for these key performance indicator results that you're getting, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's not limited to, you know, again, the um, the 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 CRM uh, necessarily. I mean, this can this concept exists in in any application, really. But the prospect and the customer really are two different people, if you will, two different types of opportunities. Um, and the prospect will typically live in the CRM um, because you are wanting to turn that into a client, right? And typically once a transaction has occurred, that is when that client now, the prospect is now a client. Some people do quotes and that's when the prospect actually starts to live in the ERP system. But monitoring that behavior before they actually become a customer is very important. Gauging their interest level is, is super important. And then what you do about that instead of being reactive. So for example, we have a prospect, he's filled out a form to download a copy of a software or um, for a quote on a new kettlebell. And um, he's now uh, in the CRM right but he's going around and he's clicking on our website right he's looking at other gym equipment that's available um he opened the email that i sent them you know several times and he clicked on particular links within that email these are all um actions that can be recognized in a crm and help us understand the customer journey and allow us to have a proactive engagement with them mm -hmm. right so that means that i know what he's interested in so when i do call him i have a reason to call him and again whether you're in sales or you're in customer service this is important um and so proactive engagement my reason for calling him was hey john i noticed that you received the email i sent and that you had a particular interest in the new kettlebell that's indestructible um can we talk about that right um and so when we're talking about prospects and understanding their journey, we also want to do that for clients. The journey isn't just the stages in which you have defined that take the prospect to being a customer or the stages that you have defined about the customer uh, order process, payables process, all of that stuff. It's about where the customer is in that cycle, right? Because where he is in his buying cycle or his ordering frame of mind, let's say, is not necessarily the steps that you've defined and categorized for him. Um, and so make sure that you take time to understand the customer journey because then you can adopt your processes and your stages, your proactive responses to what that journey has been like. Again, whether it's a prospect or an actual client, right? So understanding that journey is super important. Michael, you wanna talk a bit about monitoring customer behavior? 
Yeah, happy to. So this is probably one of my favorite things about about HubSpot and having the ability to to kind of track how people are interacting with a your emails, your on your website, where they're going to on your website. You can see where they're going to in your knowledge base. So if they have any questions, you can see. Okay, maybe you know more and more people have questions about this. I should start reaching out or build more of a robust knowledge base around this topic. Um, but it also like for 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 companies that have um, just an array of, of physical products, it gives you the ability to upsell people too. So if somebody has mm -hmm. bought, for example, in a health in the healthcare industry, has bought bought a, a knee sleeve or you know an elbow brace or, or something like that, but they're also looking for something that might be an ankle brace. Maybe they mm -hmm. ventured over to that page and they they looked at an ankle brace or they're looking at another knee sleeve you would be able to drop those people into a marketing campaign that would say, here's here's a little bit of information about the benefits of our ankle braces or our, our uh, the the other the other products that we manufacture. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It also gives you the bit and then back to emails, when you're engaging, when you're sending out bulk emails like what Katie has here to 112 people, you're able to see an open rate of 60%. And that's a pretty good open rate. But the, it's really the click rate and where you have 22% mm -hmm. of them are clicking through or 25 unique clicks overall. Mm -hmm. um, and if you dive down deeper into that, you'd be able to see who has clicked multiple times because you have a total click of 29. There's, there's a good chance there's a couple of people that have clicked multiple times. Mm -hmm. They're your prospective people that you want to reach out to because they're really interested in what your email was was speaking about right? mm -hmm. i think one of the advantages too is that um it serves as a bit of a cleanup right so i mean you're understanding mm -hmm. the customer behavior and the customer journey through these kinds of analytics but it also actually will tell you how many were bounces how many emails uh either no you know the person's no longer there or it just bounced back for whatever reason um mm -hmm. and crms that have built in uh email marketing in them if you will are also designed to keep you castle compliant right to make sure mm -hmm. that you're not spamming you're not overdoing it um and and keeping you really uh up to par on all of these things um i think that what's also interesting is it gives you detailed uh reports on not just who clicked where but who actually took the time to read the messages um i can't tell you enough how many times in marketing we send out a campaign and you realize like okay nobody's really read it right <laughs> so um CRM tools that are robust can actually tell you and measure that, you know, a portion of your audience actually read the message and some of them just kind of skimmed over it too, right? Mm -hmm. And further, if it's of interest of you to you, how are they viewing your uh, communications? Is it through, again, look, Microsoft Office, Gmail, is it on their iPhone? Um, you know, if you are in uh, any kind of service-based technology business, you see that some people are opening uh, emails on very old software, Out Outlook 2013. You know, that could be um, an indication that you could call them and say, hey, Time to upgrade your Microsoft, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, um, so there's a lot of detail in there, and and what you do with that is important. Um, Michael, talk to us a little bit more about um, how your integration connection with HubSpot and Spire would benefit the people that are here with us today. Yeah. So with the the integration between HubSpot and Spire is is in a way a bi-directional integration so you can send new prospective clients so people that have gone through the kind of the sales funnel and now are converting to be a client to spire this prevents somebody from ha actually having to create a new a new customer in spire and it also creates a link between spire and hubspot um, once that is established the bi-directional part of the integration is is over so now any changes made in HubSpot are no longer pushed into, into Spire. It's only Spire to, to HubSpot. Spire stays as your single source of truth, um, which is important to have in there. You should always kind of determine what is your single source of truth. And then after that, any updates to your the, the billing address or any of that information will get pushed into, into HubSpot from Spire. 
then as you add your ship twos, um, all of that, that'll also get added into, into HubSpot as well. So your sales teams can now build out a deal where they are adding in the bill to the ship to, and then the buyer and the receiver and like, or the user and, and all of that type of information. So you can see, so everybody can see the big picture there of who's involved in this, in this purchase of a product, right? Mm -hmm. um, the next is you'll be able to push all of your transactional information. So any of the order information and invoices, your quotes, all of that will get updated back into, into HubSpot as well. So you can see when an order was placed, what stage that order is in. So has it been processed? If you're using phases inspire, you'll be able to see that as well in, in HubSpot, like needs approval, approve, all of those different types of phases. And then as well, you can use the processed, which is shipped and then invoiced from there. And it goes, goes into sales history. What you can do with that information is that once a product or an order has been shipped, HubSpot's picking that up and now you can send, you can start enrolling them into a kind of a marketing drip or a educational drip where if they're new to the company, they've never purchased this product. For example, I'll use the knee sleeve again. Um, you can start sending them all the benefits on how to use it. You can, so you can send them maybe a series of five or six emails that says, okay, here's how to use it. Here are the, here's the things to look for, you know, all of those kind of educational help to things. And then you can also in, build in those emails as well, kind of your upsell topics as well. Like if you like it, and then you can also ask for feedback too. Mm -hmm. And how that would, sorry, go ahead, Katie. No, no, please, Michael, continue. And so how that would work is as a new deal is created um, and that deal is then updated to ships, that becomes a trigger within HubSpot. And that's what triggers these deals to get enrolled into this automatic marketing sequence. Mm -hmm. So whether it's, um, you know, again, a potential customer who's perusing the website and they've mm -hmm. either filled out a form or you can track um, what product they might be looking at in particular on your website or um, in, a, in a more simple today kind of example, um, you have a, a regular customer who has placed an order for that fancy new kettlebell that doesn't break. Um, if I'm hearing you correctly, this CRM can allow for an automated message to go out saying, thank you for placing your order. Um, yep. Here's your tracking number. Um, mm -hmm. Please let us know if you have any questions. And then that goes out. And then could you tell HubSpot to check the tracking number and, and say, uh, okay, the package was received or at least create a task to confirm that the package was received, let's say. Um, yep. and, and the agent says, okay, the package has been received. So now another automated message, but very personalized. So the guy on the end doesn't feel like he's just getting some robotic kind of message, right? Um, mm -hmm. So an, on, uh, an email then goes out uh, a few days later we see you've received your order. We hope you're happy with it. Here are five tips on how to use the brand new kettlebell, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's that educational kind of thing. And I think that, I think buyers want that. They want to be fed little bits of information that is digestible, um, that they can apply to their knowledge, right? So if, if I'm buying a kettlebell, maybe I own a gym, and um, maybe those five ways to use this brand new kettlebell are actually things that I can start sharing with my clients, right? So offering um, information that way. And at the end of the day, your staff isn't sitting there typing it all out or having to decide, you know, which email should I send to this guy based on a category that exists in Spire, which is the source of truth, where all the, the true data exists. HubSpot can say, okay, that order was placed. Now, we're going to go ahead and, and follow these different drips, as you called them, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So what are we looking at here, Michael? Yeah. So this is an example of a table of where each of your orders are kind of sitting at. So here you can see all of your quotes, your open orders. You can see the total value of all of those open orders, the value of those open quotes as well. Orders that have been shipped and the value of those orders that have been invoiced and then your sales history. So those that have been invoiced and paid, right? Like an ordered invoice. Mm -hmm. um, and so you get a, you get a, just a quick kind of overview and it's the same data that's already in Spire. It's just now this is 
easily accessible by the sales team. So they can come in here and they can go, okay, I'm looking for quality in. I see I have an order that's been invoiced. I'm gonna click on that, it's for $49. I can see when it was invoiced, I can follow up with it and I can just make sure that I, I can check the tracking number. I can do all of these manual things or I can make sure that that's getting enrolled in that automatic kind of marketing educational drip as well, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Yeah. And this, I believe, and, is a workflow, Michael. Yeah. So this is a this is actually both a, uh, an email sequence and a workflow. So the new analytics download is the one I already kind of spoke to a little bit. But this is basically what happens when somebody comes into Gemini to download a analytics trial. So they're going to receive this first email, and there you can see in the orange it says "Hi, contact first name." So it's going to grab the first name of the person who downloaded that and then it's going to provide them with the information that they need to actually run analytics it'll point to all the videos that we have on our on on youtube etc then the next day you can see my phone call and then after that in 15 days there's another follow-up email this is all automatic so i don't need to reach out to them or anything like that if they respond to any of those emails it'll kick them out of this so that they don't get another one but mm -hmm. then you can, I can interact with them one on one from there. But for the most part, it's it's automatic. And then mm -hmm. over on the other side here, this is for a deal triggered, saved to fire. So when a deal or a sales prospect hits a certain stage in their light life cycle, we want to send all of their information into Spire and create a customer, create the contacts, create add all of that information into Spire. Uh, this will this will essentially do it automatically. So the salesperson mm -hmm. doesn't have to remember. Oh, I need to I need to make sure I send this information over to Spire so that they can then you know, log that in and they our uh, accounts people can can start building out quotes and orders and everything all within Spire. This will do it automatically. Takes it off the salesperson hand and then it's just done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool. So it does take some time to set these things up and, and some thoughtfulness, really, right? When we talk about what kind of automated communications are going to go out and what are mm -hmm. the steps that um, you're going to be designing for those automation communications or tasks or change mm -hmm. of detail. Um, and so exactly. designing that, right? Um, really again understanding the customer journey will help you design these communications and help you design these uh, automated triggers for the workflows um, mm -hmm. understanding what your key performance indicators are as well like what are you working towards understanding is it uh, you want to look at all the sales in a year you want to look at um, how many customer issues uh, came in you want to look at who's the most responsive agent you want to look at how much time is spent on a campaign in particular, right? So mm -hmm. all of this stuff should be considered when I think you're designing uh, an, an automation communication or, or workflow. Um, dashboard reporting, Michael. Um, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that. Um, there are three, I did a bit of research given you know the topic and then also what I already know. Um, yep. And there are there are some different types of dashboards really. And and in my experience, when someone is looking for dashboard reporting, that could mean a lot of things. Right. Mm -hmm. So yes. depending on what it means to the to the client, right? Or to the person who wants dashboard reporting. Um, is it an overview of sales? Is it an overview of your how your warehouse is performing? Is it an over I mean, what's common, I think, Michael, is a dashboard is, you know, everything that you want to know in one place right mm -hmm. um, but the elements of that can change depending on the type of dashboard that you're looking for right exactly. so exactly. tell me a bit about um, what we've got here on the slide right so three types of dashboard you and I were kind of talking about that and we'll show some examples um, I'm gonna mm -hmm. share the screen uh, with you or hand you the com in, in just a few minutes but let's talk okay. about like operational dashboard right so tell me a bit about that so your operational dashboard, these these would be geared towards kind of your operations end end of things. So it's going to be your your sales teams, it's going to be your your marketing teams, and it'll give you an overview of the operation that they're like the the activities that they're going through, right? 
uh, and the kind of the the activity that they will use on a day-to-day -day basis to make decisions on what happens next um, and what is what's an important thing to get done essentially right so mm -hmm. I have a couple of good examples that that I can I can speak to as well great on my why don't then, I you know, why don't I change the uh, um, the screen over to you I'm gonna go ahead and make you the presenter Michael sure and we can see what you want to show us here okay so you should have the ability to do that now yep all right can you see my screen there i can so michael yeah this is this is the spire dashboard and th this is all information that everybody here is likely fairly familiar with because this is information that's from inspire health okay so this will be this will give you an overview of all of the operational side of things so your order status your aged accounts receivable days average days to pay etc this is all information that is essentially living within within inspire already but it just now is information that's shared with your sales teams and what they can do with this is they'll be able to come in here and they can go okay well what was the the last purchase but the top 25 last purchases here i can see who did it holiday in made a really nice little purchase here for $57,000. And I can see all of my, all the way down, down the list here. Next is you're gonna be able to see invoice by salesperson. So you'll be able to see what each salesperson is doing, how they're performing throughout. Um, and then all the way down to, or who's created those orders. But on top of that, you can also see customers by last payment. And this is gonna give you the ability to see a1 Park, for example, hasn't made a purchase since May 2021. This would be somebody that would be in, at risk, at risk of no longer becoming your client. Right? Mm -hmm. And then here you have your, your AR report as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For for other uh, DAT dashboards, you can also have your attribution dashboard. So this is a marketing dashboard that you'd see in here and you'd be able to attribute revenue to certain marketing activities. So for example, here you have your total deal value by marketing source. So you can see your marketing source and the values that are brought in there. And then you have by segment, so healthcare, unknown, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then marketing leads by pipeline, in pipeline, sorry, and what stage in the pipeline they are. So you would be able to see how marketing has influenced different stages of that park pipeline. Um, and this is all revenue and dollar values that are coming in from Spire. So it's all being attributed back to, to Spire and the sales that are happening within Spire. And you can combine marketing activities with those um, those sales activities, right? Or the, mm -hmm. the transactional activity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Marketing campaign influence, et cetera, all the way down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about the different types of campaign uh, dashboards, rather, you know, we've got the operational one. And so the, I think that was more the first one that you were kind of showing, yes. right? Where it's it's yes. showing kind of everything that's going on in different areas of the business, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then we have analytical dashboards as well, which mm -hmm. should be used to identify trends and, and influence future decision making, right? Mm -hmm. um, so things like, uh, I think what your second example was showing perhaps in terms yeah. of uh, how people are behaving with marketing information that's being received to them, right? Exactly. And that should be a good gauge for the business to decide that messaging worked really well. We saw a good amount of sales come from that messaging because we now mm -hmm. know where our sales are coming from. And we can now gear the messaging in our next promotion to either replicate that because it was super successful, or do we really have to change how we're um, advertising or promoting to our clients and future clients, right? And then yeah. the strategic kind of dashboard, right, is really looking at those key performance indicators. And I, I believe you can build that out as well, mm -hmm. right, Michael? Um, okay. And these these dashboards are all customizable that you're showing us, right? They are. Um, yeah. 
And so tracking the key performance indicators, again, if you're a service-based company, maybe your, your response time is something you want to measure. Maybe the agent that is most responsive, uh, maybe, um, you know, other details like that that are more customer service oriented. And those KPIs should be designed when you're, when you're looking at them in a dashboard, should be designed to help you improve your processes, not mm -hmm. just your communication, um, but your processes internally. Right. Um, yeah. So go ahead. Here we have a service da dashboard that shows you all your new tickets waiting on contact, waiting on us, and you'll you'll get an overview of like where each kind of each ticket is currently sitting and the performance of how long does it take from you know a ticket being received to getting resolved or how long does it sit on in waiting for us or any of those right. So you get mm -hmm. you get a chance chance to see that overview and what areas need 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 to be improved on. Mm -hmm. Michael, in your experience, and, and you've worked with this program for many years, my understanding is. So yes. um, and can you, you talk about maybe one of the most simple dashboards you've seen and then one of the most complex? So just to give our audience an idea of how valuable a dashboard reporting can be, because I think some people might think, ah, I don't need that. I'll just pull a report or whatever. So the simplest sure. and the most complex. Yeah. Yeah, so let's start off with actually complex. Uh, and a complex one would be probably your sales forecasting. And then I'll jump into a very simple da dashboard after that. And your sales forecasting is gonna, it's gonna take into account weighted forecasts. It's gonna say like only, okay, 40% of these deals are actually gonna close on time and it's gonna give you the value of those 40%. So here, for example, you have you have two deal pipelines here um, and, and essentially you have best case you have commit and then you have closed ones and you're able to see the percentage of that versus the actual total value of those deals right there right so you can see in the same timeline for 2022 best weight or for the weighted category is only 461,000 versus four million dollars so you can take into account like okay well we're going to put in four million dollars in potential sales but really out of it we can only really expect four hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Right. That's and very valuable information. Exactly. And you can take that all the way through to manufacturing, especially if you're a manufacturing company and you're developing widgets or knee sleeves or anything like that. And you can go, OK, we need to manufacture this. Right. Um, mm -hmm. You can break this down even farther down into SKUs as well. So you can see the sales forecast and say, OK, we're only going to close 40% of what's in the deal pipeline and you can break it all the way down to the specific SKU as well. So you can say, okay, I need, you know, we have a deal pipeline of 10,000 knee sleeves or kettlebells, but only 40% is actually going to close on that. So we're going to only manufacture maybe 50%. So we have some overhead, right? So we have some, mm -hmm. some, some room overhead. Mm -hmm. And again, you have your weighted pipeline forecast and and so pipeline forecast unweighted there that you can see um, very similar type reports just kind of broken down more into by the month. So you can see it broken down a little bit further. Um, your deal change history. So this is going to be a uh, volume like the deal, deal value change changing as well. So increase, decrease, that type of thing. And then you have your push rates as well. So you're able to see where, well, how many deals are getting pushed and then your average velocity too that you're, you, you can see. So what is your sales cycle? Is it 419 days or is it 87, right? Mm -hmm. What is this salesperson doing differently than this salesperson? Why does it take 468 days for this salesperson to close their deals where this one can get it done in 87? Mm -hmm. Because right. one's one's selling not very good kettlebells and the other one's selling better kettlebells. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so this is <laughs> this is a complex this is a complex example of a dashboard. Go ahead and show us a, a very simplified dashboard yeah. that would be of value to a client. So a simplified dashboard, and let's just um, I'll just go in here. We'll create a new dashboard for a very simple one, and it could just be. You know, you're a simple sales dashboard where it's just going to include team activities. Um, so you click on next and then create this dashboard. And now this is our demo data here, but you get an idea of, you know, the team activities right here, contacts created and worked, uh, deals closed versus total goal, deal revenue forecast by stages, 
overall, it's a very kind of simple dashboard, team activity totals, you know, tasks, what has changed from today, from tomorrow, like uh, versus, or even you can see the comparison between this month and last month. So you just mm -hmm. get an overall view of what's going on in, in, in the business on the sales side of things. Um, yeah, so uh, you, you can make them as simple or as complex depending on your reporting needs really mm -hmm. um, and especially mm -hmm. when you can now combine your all of your spire information with your sales and marketing information you mm -hmm. have pretty much all the data in one platform that you can manipulate to to show whatever you're looking for right? yeah that's yeah. amazing thank you michael i'm going to go yeah. ahead and uh share my screen again and we're at the end of our presentation um i think i think there's a lot of value in in what we were discussing here today and again for those businesses that are mature businesses where you know you've been using the same processes for many many years and everything is working really well um it might be time to look at how to even better some of those processes to meet the contemporary demands that exist today, okay? And if you're somebody who's thinking of hiring younger staff or maybe um, you're a family-owned business that's passing the business on to your kids or, or succeeding to somebody else, the younger generation is looking for contemporary features. Spire is a very contemporary program built on modern technology and to have this connection to what I can see is a very robust CRM, Michael, I think is really just a fantastic opportunity for people. Um, thank you all so much for, for sharing time with us here today. And Michael, uh, always a pleasure to work with you on things. And I look forward to having that opportunity again, ladies and gentlemen. Um, again, our knowledge-based webinar series is happening every month this year. And for the month of May, please join us on the 18th. That's a Wednesday, same time at noon Eastern time. And we're going to be taking a look at understanding EDI, from simple EDI requirements to the more complex EDI requirements. And this is a whole a whole interesting topic. And my guest will be Gerhard Peters from Iversa. Michael, thanks again. It, it was so Thank nice you. to work with you. Have a wonderful Likewise. day, everybody. And we'll see you all again very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.